Hello, everyone, and welcome back, Lieutenant Coates. Here's another four flight demo that I think is going to be of use to us as a squadron. This is four flight leaded. What do I mean by that? Well, if you watched the uh, first four flight light presentation, you saw a brief overview of some of the basic features and setup requirements uh, that were needed to. Kind of get you up and running. Uh, this presentation is going to go a little bit more in depth and show some tools within ForeFlight that are bigger SA builders than what was uh, previously presented last time. So, uh, in short, you watched the Miller Lite version. This is going to be the Miller Genuine Draft. And over the next couple months, as this program progresses, we may get to the Miller High Life version. There's there's no telling. That being said, there's a ton of stuff that still has yet to be, to get covered, uh, but this should be a pretty good exercise for everybody. Uh, if you want, it was brought up yesterday in the first meeting, but there are hundreds of hours of content out there that uh, you can go and, and look at just on the Four Flight website itself um, and then on YouTube as well. So let's dive in. This scenario was developed specifically for Colonel Cluck, so we'll see if he's watching this. Um, war has erupted in Kansas, and the 139th has been tasked with performing airdrops over north-central Kansas, as well as low-level target validation over northeastern Kansas. For our routing today, we're going to depart out of St. Joe, and enter IR505 at point alpha. We're then gonna exit 505 at kilo and fly to MCI via the Jayhawk 6 Emporia transition. After exiting kilo, we're gonna climb up to 200, stay high with KC Center and perform a pin D into MCI for 30 minutes of pro because even in the middle of war, we gotta get our beans. Then gonna RTB back to St. Joe and finish off our mission with a 24 AO, and we're gonna have a briefed threat out by Horton. Some of the tools uh, that we're gonna to use to complete this scenario, enabling MTRs, military training routes, slow viz instrument routes, dragging route to affix and some of the options within that capability, star departure selection, a long track offsets, uh, which we're going to use to mark our pin D initiation point. 3D airport preview, setting a flight plan delay, which will translate uh, when we start talking about filing 1801s toward the end of the presentation. Overlaying low level charts with the moving map. Setting a bullseye and establishing an en route point off of a radial DME from that bullseye. And then finally, 1801s, which I expect there to be quite a bit of conversation about. So, with no further ado, I'm going to swap over here. All right, MTRs. Four Flight came out with this feature a couple of years ago, uh, it wasn't previously updated, uh, so it's kind of nice, and we don't fly a lot of MTRs at St. Joe, but it's definitely something uh, that is a possibility for us. If you go and look at the top of the screen here, right next to flight plan, you've got that cog, and under the aeronautical section, military training routes, IR, SR, VR, so, for example, all the SR routes, you can look at these. There's the ones around St. Joe. If anybody wants to go back down to Little Rock and fly the old 220, these are all available now with the touch of a button. For today's purpose, we're going to look at IR routes.
So per our routing that was reefed just a little bit ago, we're gonna leave out of St. Joe. We're gonna fly the IR505. Entering at alpha, exiting at kilo. We're then gonna go to MCI for our pro portion. And so this kind of gives you the basic overview of what we're gonna do for the quote unquote instrument portion of our flight. So chances are out of St. Joe, we're not just gonna go direct to the IR 505 point alpha. Most of you probably know this, but it's pretty easy to just drag and drop your line, your routing line. And you can select different nav aids, different GPS points. Um, if you wanted to put a random lat long out there, you could do that. We're not gonna do that. We'll fly nav aids all the way to point alpha for the IR505. So we take off out of St. Joe, hit the vortex, Pawnee over, enter there. Four flight's gonna already show you your minimum entry altitude, step downs, and minimum altitudes around the entire route, which is pretty useful. And it'll do that for IRs, SRs, VRs. It's all the same. So, after IR505, we're going to go back to MCI, but we want to get back to MCI via the Jayhawk 6 arrival. So, how do we go about doing that? Up on the top right of the screen, we have this procedure tab. Arrivals into MCI. This is not at all practical, but for today's, for today's purpose, this is going to work just fine. So we can select that Jayhawk 6 arrival, and then it's going to ask us for a transition. Let's do the Emporia transition. Ignore the best winds there. We're going to assume that it's north flow, and select runway 1 left. Add that to the route. And then you'll notice that it's automatically going to update the distance, your estimated time in route, fuel, and that's all based off of your aircraft profile, which I'll talk about here in just a little bit. So we've selected our arrival into MCI. And we had talked about after exiting point kilo, we're going to climb up to 200. We're going to stay high with... Kansas City Center because they're bros and they let us do that and we want to do a pin D into MCI so we're going to use our for reference only cheat sheet here and say that we're looking at that top row 130,000 pounds and 20,000 feet looks like 39.0 So at 39 miles from MCI, I want to start my pendy. So how do I go about figuring out where on this route I want to do that? If you click on this leg between hose and MCI, it's going to tell you that it's 36 miles. So 39, 36, three miles prior to hose, I want to start my penetration descent. And I'm going to do that by marking in a long track offset. So distance before hose, three miles. Three and 36 equals 39. I'm going to insert that and it's going to put it right up in the flight plan window as well. Three before hose 
And that's going to be my reminder that I need to start my pin D into MCI to be on profile. So all that's set up and say you've never been to MCI, one of the great things that ForeFlight lets you do is a 3D view of the airport. So you can go in here and for runway one left, which you see highlighted in blue at the top right, this is what you're going to be seeing at one mile on a three degree glide slope. If they swap the runway on you over to one right, you just highlight that. It's going to move. You can select whatever runway you want, and it's going to give you that three degree slope, or if you want to Vargas approach into Suda Bay, you can see what a 30 degree half mile approach looks like and go from there. But this is just a great essay tool for unfamiliar airfields. You can scroll around, look at what the terrain looks like. Uh, it's not 3D, it's just Google image. Uh, 3D is something that may be coming in the future, uh, but we'll see. So that's 3D view of the airfield. We'd also talked about we're going to shoot 30 minutes of pro at MCI before we're going back to St. Joe. So what I have found is that you can easily input a 30 minute delay here, but right below that flight plan edit window, the distance, ETE, fuel, none of that is going to change until you actually send this to the flight tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and just click on MCI, replace MCI, and go MCI forward slash delay zero plus 30 minutes and replace that. So now if you look here at um, just below the flight plan window, ETE one hour and 26 minutes, that is not actually accounting for that 30 minute delay that we just input. However, when you use this send to button, which is right here. That's what I'm referring to when I say send to. We're going to send to flights and it's not going to work for me. So if we go ahead and input KSTJ, then send it to the flights, then it's going to reflect that 30 minute delay, which I meant to uh, bring up before I did that. So having the delay in there is going to be useful when you send it to the flight, but it will not let you send it here and file that way with the delay as your last point. So you have to have some kind of point after your delay in order to send it and file. All right, back to the map here. So I was kind of debating and going back and forth on how I wanted to present this and luckily when you send all this info to the flights tab it will save in there so what we're going to do is go back and we're going to clear this all out if you remember our little routing uh, exercise after our pro we're going to go back to St. Joe so 
that's exactly what this flight plan is doing. So we're gonna have everything up to MCI, our 30 minute delay, and then back to St. Joe. And then we're going to go into the 24 AO for the last part of our flight. Your friendly tactics officers have hooked us up and within Goodreader, and I'll go back home here so that we can all walk through this together. Within Goodreader, if you go into your pubs, local St. Joe, local charts, here are the vis routes that we fly most often. If you click here on this 24 AO, you can then open in another app for flight. And it's going to import here and ask you where you want to save it. If you remember from yesterday, I told you to add the custom content tab down in that tab bar, and this is why. So you can import straight to that custom content. Save that there. And then when you go to the top left for your map layers, you scroll all the way to the bottom. Now we have this 24 AO chart that we can overlay for our viz route that is geolocated right here, which is fantastic. And then bonus points, if you have all of the routes saved, which if you don't reach out to one of us nerds that probably does, and then you can overlay the 24 AO right on top of there as well. And you have your whole route. So back to the uh, profile, we have a briefed threat in the area of Horton, Kansas. So say we're going out on the 24 AO and on this first leg, they give us, hey, off of the bullseye in Horton, Kansas. On the 115 at three miles, we've got a threat that we want you guys to go and check out. Okay, so in our pre-flight, we set our bullseye over there on top of Horton, and we say, okay, the 115 at three miles. So in between these two points, which I still have them as just straight GPS coordinates, but you could change them to actual names if you wanted to. I'm gonna go up in my flight plan edit window and insert before that third point. And you can spell out Bullseye, I don't know why you ever would, because they did an update, and now you can just put a B slash 115 at 3, insert that, and that's going to put that right into your route of flight as a point, the Bullseye 115 at 3. So, I mean, there's, there's obviously a lot more that can be done with this, but as far as local flying, I think uh, these are some, some features that we can probably uh, expand on. Now, um, I'm going to jump back to my flight tab. And this one that we filed, or not filed, but submitted just a little bit ago. St. Joe to St. Joe. We're going to talk a little bit about what needs to be done to get this filed through for flight. Um, first of all, making sure that your estimated time of departure is correct. So I'm obviously doing this at nine something p.m. 
But if we want to set this for Friday 11.30 a.m. And then I think Duds was the one that went through and input all of St. Joe's aircraft in here. So if you have connected recently um, and updated everything, all of the aircraft should be on your iPads. Let's, uh, for today, fly 9-7. The performance profile, for the most part, is correct. We do need to go back through and change a couple numbers, but um, that's for a different briefing. So this is going to give you um, the option to change your flight rules. It'll give you an overview of your routing. Here we can change how many people are on board. It already averages to 200 pounds, which checks. Fuel policy, this is something that will um, probably need to be changed. You can go down here and select manual fuel. And then your starting fuel, change that to whatever you're taking off with. Let's call it 35,000 pounds. It's then going to take your ETE at the programmed fuel burn to come up with the fuel at landing. All the zero fuel weights should be input for, the, uh, for each tail. And then we click proceed to file. Mine now defaults to DD1801, but forever it was on the FAA domestic. Let's just keep it at the 1801. We're going to go through and review, um, not now, uh, in the future. We're going to make sure that all these codes are correct for each aircraft um, profile to make sure that we're actually filing all the correct codes. Destination, KSTJ. Even as I'm going through this, just as, as an example, I, I just double check everything to make sure that it all jives with um, what I want to file. So this down at the very bottom, this file electronically. What that is telling me is that as soon as I hit file, this is going to go to ATC. When I disable that, the only thing that this is going to do is send this flight plan to base ops. Right now I just have my email in there as an example, but say we were just pre-mission planning and not actually wanting to file this and go fly it right now, we could put in the SOFS email here and it's going to send this flight plan and everything to just him and the email that you have selected here, so myself. And then if we wanted to use that and say that the SOFT was actually going to file, then we could go that route. When I hit file electronically, this is going straight to ATC, and I'm going to get a notification saying, hey, your flight plan has been filed, which let's do. This will generate your 1801. At the top right, you can go sign and file. Flight plans filed. Right there. So at any time between now and the 15th at 1130, I can go in and amend this and file those changes. I can come in here and I can cancel the flight plan which I will do, but it'll still be saved over here in the list if I want to go in and refile. Okay. And there you see, file briefing came to my work email right there. So the next part of this, hopefully you all watched this before, um, we meet and discuss the 1801 process. Um, 
I haven't been on base uh, for a while, so I'm interested to see what the current process is like. Uh, I'd like to get some of your guys' feedback. If you're watching this, start writing down some notes, um, things that that we need to do better. Um, I have a couple things here. Make sure that we are uh, updating and editing all the aircraft profiles. I'll verify all those codes in four flight first, uh, the GP. But please come up with ideas to bring to uh, the meeting to talk about. Other than that, I'll answer any questions then. See ya.